Buffers are incredibly important compounds that are responsible for maintaining pH at reasonably constant levels in a wide variety of contexts, from the oceans to our very own blood. They work because a conjugate pair of acid and base molecules can exist together in solution. Therefore, any incoming acid can be neutralized by the base, and any incoming base can be neutralized by the acid. Most of the theory depends on the famous Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. This equation states that the pH of a solution of a weak acid is equal to the pKa for that acid, which is just the negative log of the Ka equilibrium constant, plus the log of the ratio of concentrations of the conjugate base and the conjugate acid. So all we really need to know are the relative concentrations of the conjugate acid and base, and we can work out the pH we expect our buffer to be at. We usually create buffers in one of two ways. In the first way, we can just directly combine our weak acid and base together. For example, acetic acid is a common weak acid used in buffer solutions. It could be combined with its conjugate base, acetate, directly to form a buffer. Acetate is usually found as a salt such as sodium acetate, or in the case of today's lab, a hydrate. In this case, we just need to work out how many moles of each we've got, and we can determine our expected pH directly from the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. Alternatively, we can have only one of the conjugates and add a strong acid or base to it and convert some of it directly to its conjugate. So if we had, say, five moles of a weak acid, like acetic acid, adding one mole of a strong base, like NaOH, will convert exactly one mole of the weak acid to its conjugate base. That would leave us with four moles of weak acid remaining and one mole of its conjugate base formed. So we've got a buffer, and again, we know the number of moles of each conjugate acid and base, so plugging them into the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation determines the expected pH. Since in all cases today, the acid and base will be in the same total volume of solution, we can either use concentrations or moles in the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. Finally, you can use all of this to actually tailor make a buffer to your pH of your choosing. The Henderson-Hasselbalch equation can be reverse engineered, so to speak, to produce a specific pH. In this case, you'll just need to set the pH to whatever you want it to be, and then solve for the number of moles of the conjugate that you need. Knowing that, you can use the formula weight of the conjugate to determine the mass of the conjugate needed. In today's experiment, we'll be preparing our very own buffer solutions, calculating their pH, and then checking their pH experimentally. Additionally, we'll add some strong acid and base to our buffer solutions to see how well they can actually maintain pH when put under stress. Then finally, we'll design a buffer from scratch to maintain a specific pH of our choosing. You'll have a pH meter available on your benchtop today. Before using it though, it must be standardized against a buffer solution of pH 7. To do that, a buffer solution that has a known pH of 7 is provided. Place the pH electrode in that buffer solution on top of the stirring plate. Once the solution is stirring, press the Cal button, followed by the Up or DN buttons, until the screen reads 7 pH like so. Next, press the Yes button and the screen will read Ready. Press yes to accept, and then yes once more when the screen reads SLP 100. One more yes, and we're all done and ready to use your pH meter. This is the list of buffer solutions that you'll make today. It's in your lab manual and contains several different acid-base pairs to experiment with. You'll prepare each of these buffer solutions in a 250 ml beaker. The volume of each solution you need should be measured with a graduated cylinder. The masses can be weighed on a two decimal top-loading balance. Once you've got them made, Measure the pH of each buffer solution prepared with your pH meter. Make sure that the solution is stirring on the stir plate while you measure the pH. Now that you know the actual pH of each buffer, try calculating the pH they should be to see how close you are. First, calculate the number of moles of the acid and base pair in each buffer solution and then use the appropriate Ka value to determine the expected pH. Do your calculations agree with your experimental observations? Now, by their very nature, a buffer can withstand a change in pH when acids or bases are added. So let's test our buffers to see how well they maintain their pH when adding a strong acid or base to it. In 100 ml beakers, prepare the six test solutions listed in your lab manual. The first three are just 50 ml samples of buffer solutions number one, three, and five, with one ml of strong base added. You can use a graduated cylinder for the buffer solution measurement and one of these disposable pipettes for the one mil addition of acid or base. The second three are 50 mil samples of the same three buffer solutions, but with one mil of strong acid added instead. Since you use buffer solutions one, three, and five, 
The initial pH of each of the six solutions is the pH that you recorded earlier for that solution in the first part of the experiment. Using the pH meter, you can now measure the new pH of each solution. Have they changed significantly? The final exercise today is to make your own buffer to a specifically chosen pH. For this, you'll use the pH given in your pre-lab exercise. You'll use 100 mL of the 0.2 molar acetic acid solution, 100 mL of deionized water, and a calculated quantity of sodium acetate trihydrate, which is the conjugate base of the acetic acid. Using the math we reviewed earlier, you'll need to figure out exactly how much of the sodium acetate trihydrate to use in order to make the buffer solution to the correct pH. Don't forget to show your calculations. Finally, measure the pH of your buffer solution to see how well you've done. Most of the calculations you'll need to do today are pretty straightforward. For example, finding the number of moles from volume and concentration data. Since molarity is expressed in units of moles per liter, multiplying a concentration by the number of liters will result in the number of moles of that species. Also, manipulating the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation will be important. For example, if you need to solve for the amount of a conjugate base, you'll need to find the inverse of a log function. First, isolate the log function by subtracting pKa from both sides. Then take the inverse log to get rid of the log function. Finally, multiply by the amount of acid to solve for the amount of base. With that, you should have all the tools you need to have a very successful lab experience with buffers. Enjoy!